Um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. We want to welcome you once again um, to this service where we talk about the Word of God. So we want to give you a warm welcome as we continue to explore the truth of God and understand what God wants us to do. So we give God glory for allowing you to be here today. And uh, um, so last week we were talking about the word of God and where Jesus was talking about two groups of people and saying that you have been given the secrets of the kingdom of God. So meaning that they had been given the truth about the kingdom of God. But he said to others who are outside, you know, they hear in parables and then so that they, they hear but they don't understand. Uh, they, they look, but they don't see. So um, what we got from there was that um, you need to make a decision. Where are you? Are you outside where you just hear things in, you know, in parables, where you don't, don't really understand things? Because it's, it is from understanding that, that we start to do things of God. Um, it is our perception what we perceive um, that determines then what we do. So when you look at the word of God, what you find is that um, even God spoke to many people. God spoke to the children of Israel, but it was how they perceive what God was saying, that which uh, determines their um, whatever they were actually doing. So, so God spoke to people, and God spoke to the children of Israel. But um, out of what God was actually saying, whether it was through people, whether it was actually uh, through Moses, whether whatever it is, it was, but actually people always had perception, as we always have, have perceptions today. So depend on, depending on the perception we have, that's what determines our action. So even if God says something to us, it depends on what we believe. Do we really believe what God is actually saying? That's what will determine our course of action. That's why you hear when, the, 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 when God spoke to the children of Israel, actually when God has, was actually giving the people to say, this is where you want, you have to be going. But people started to have a different perception to say, even if they are, so because they are giants, we won't be able to, to go there. We'll be defeated. You know, the people, they see us um, like locusts. They see us like very, very small people in our presence. What, the, what they didn't, didn't believe, what they didn't understand, was actually, despite being uh, that size, despite going to a land which was occupied by people who, who were bigger, they, they, God was actually with them, and actually God had said something. Same thing with Jesus. Jesus says, we are going to the other side. But in the middle of the journey, as they were going to the other side, where Jesus had actually promised, you know, something began to happen. And... They forget to understand that Jesus had already made a declaration. That's, that's where we are going. They were not, Jesus was not attempting to get there, but he was actually saying that that's where we are actually going. But in the middle, and when things were starting to happen, when the, uh, when the, 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 the boat was about to keep us, people were just now starting to panic. But actually, Jesus had actually said something. So here what happens is that when God speaks to us, <coughs> Even when God has promised us something, uh, sometimes our belief is now determined by our current situation. What's happening at the, at, at the particular time? What is it actually is happening at the particular time is actually going to affect the way we are going to believe or the way we are going to perceive, the way we are going to look at things. Yet the Bible says we don't walk by, by sight, but we walk by faith. It means that you have to close your eyes to things you are seeing at the moment uh, and open your faith to what God has actually said. And again, I'll go back to the word. Even your, even your, your current situation, which you, you are in right now, maybe God has said something great in your life, but maybe you are surrounded by everything which is negative. But let me say to you, the, the current situation does not determine the future you are going to have is to believe what God has actually said 
and actually to go with that side with, with that with that in mind and walk with that that's what is m most important because when we believe the current situation we are in it means that our dreams become hopeless what we believe in becomes unbelievable what we aspire for becomes something which we just think of and will, will not actually happen simply because we are more aligned and we are more focusing on what currently the situation is so i think it's very important that we understand how god works you see see god says to the children of israel uh through moses he was gonna rescue them but in the process of health uh, 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 delivering the children of israel he actually put a lot of obstacles because when you read the bible the bible says that even when god had showed miracles to pharaoh the bible actually says god hardened pharaoh's heart no the, the bible doesn't say you know pharaoh's heart was actually hardened only but it says god hardened pharaoh's heart and and so on until when god has decided to actually uh, deliver the children of israel again you find the bible explains that uh, behind the children of israel were the armies of uh, of egypt ahead the children of god or children of israel was the sea but god already made a promise remember god made a promise already about the uh, the land where god had actually promised but these are things actually happening so in other words whatever god has promised is not going to be stopped by all these things which are happening you know um it's like because god is the almighty god he he created heaven and earth and everything in it so it's like some very uh, insignificant things which are just trying to pull you back because when you compare god with anything god becomes always always he is and he is the almighty god how can you compare god with just a little thing which is happening or just a little dream which you just had where you are being chased by the demons or anything like that or whatever it is happening at your work where things are negative or or, or, or just like you got a regret from the job you'd applied for that's very minor that's very insignificant when you compare to the power of god you see so so my point is is the perception let us understand that whatever it is that you may go through today doesn't really determine uh, what it, the tomorrow holds for you as long as god is um looking after you and god is in control he's um god god's plan will always work that's that that's 100 percent, and that's for sure as long as god has said it it will happen that's what is very very important so perception becomes so so much key um in whatever it is we do so that's what we're talking about last week um but today i want us to talk about um remember what we're talking about is actually what kind of a person is it or what kind of uh, a, a person who will be able to worship god remember it's based about it's based on the fact that joshua said to the children of israel you may not be able to worship this god because these people we are actually walking believing in god but also believing in in the idols and they had not actually made a declaration or uh of of, of loyalty to god they, they still had even of god had actually done a lot of things for them uh but still they did not have they had not actually pledged their loyalty towards god and they were still hanging on to other gods because that's what the bible says but today we want to talk about another word uh we've talked about it in so many times in so many so many ways but um today we're talking about because these are the things which we need to to know that this is these are the kind of things we need to be doing and these are the kinds of the the type of a person who will be able to worship god in uh when we look at the the scripture with joshua said you may not be able to worship god so today we're going to talk about obedience um i know we've talked about it in so many so many ways but it's very important 
but um, it's 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 very uh, it's it's very interesting when we we all look at because of course we've got many people we have got uh, billions of Christians, but I think the most important thing is that are we obeying what God says? And I know many people talk about grace, which is very good, which is good. But let me say to you, Jesus Himself, He says, uh, if you obey, yeah, if you obey my commands, me and my Father, right, will come and dwell in you. So which means even Jesus himself is actually talking about obey. And remember he says, um, not everyone says, Lord, Lord, will inherit the kingdom of God or enter the kingdom of God, but those who do the will of my Father. So obedience becomes so much key in, um, in whatever it is that we, we actually do. Um, I was thinking about this thing, and I said it in the cell group when we were talking about uh, about things, you know. Um, so when you go to your work, when you go to any organization, when you go to any kind of uh, a, a social gathering or or an organization or or a company, or there is a structure there. There's a structure. So when there's a structure, there are people who will lead you there and who will tell you what needs to happen and who um, kind of uh, disseminate the information and take it down. If it's the chief executive, it goes down, director, whatever, and until to the shop floor, until people get to understand and to know what, what happens. Now, you see, the same thing also happens in the church of God. Uh, there was one time when Jesus was teaching, he says there's no student who is greater than his teacher. Why does he say that? It means that he, 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 when Jesus is talking about us, he says that as he is the teacher, it is as the student has to les listen. As he is the, as Jesus, then the disciples had to listen. And the, and the disciples, as they are also teaching the, the, the children or, or the people who are following, they also have to listen. That's exactly what it is. So, Unless we understand this concept, and unless we take this concept on board, what will always come back, we will always come back that we always stand against God. Why? Because when Moses was leading the children of Israel, and when people turned against Moses, the Bible says, they have not turned against you, but they have turned against me. So, now, so when, whatever you, it, you, it is where you, where you go, where you will find that there is, a, whether it's a chief executive, whether it's a leader, they always talk about what needs to be done. The vision, uh, the mission, and, uh, you, you know, where, where the priority, and whatever it is needs to be done. Now, so the person who worship God needs to understand this concept. Because if you don't understand this concept, we are always in loggerheads with God because God always uh, sent people. Listen, there was uh, Lazarus and the rich man. When Lazarus was, uh, the rich man was actually saying that, you know, where I am, I don't want also people to be here. So can you, is there, that was the, when the, 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 the scriptures uh, explaining the, the Lazarus and the, uh, and the rich man, meaning that the rich man was at that time in the place which was a hell, but he was now asking to say, can there be someone who can be sent so that you can also teach or tell or preach to my brothers or my sisters or, or whatever, to my relatives, in other words, so that they will not come this place. And what the Bible says, the Bible says, the preachers are there already. <laughs> All they just need to do is to listen to what is being told at that time or what is being preached. So it means that whatever it is, God wants us to hear. God will always speak. Whether it's spoken to a leader, whether it's spoken to... But as long as we hear the word of God, it means that we have to take it serious. That's why it's very important. You see, um, so if we cannot understand the concept of a company, an organization, then we cannot understand the concept of God. Because God, the Bible always gives us uh, when Jesus is, is teaching, he's always giving us the local things which we can actually see. Um, he can give us the, the examples of heaven because he says we have never been, never been to heaven. But so the structure is very, very important. 
Um, so we as children of God, we need to understand that it's very, very important and it's very, very, very key. Now, we are going to read today the Bible from the book of Samuel. And I, we, we know the scripture so much, but I, there's something I want to talk about today. So in other words, the person who God wants is the person who values obedience. Um, the person who, who understands and listens to what God is saying. That's, that's what is very, very important. Um, and again, when we listen to God, here is the, the, the great things about that when we listen to God. When we listen to God, we are making a declaration. We are making our position known. We are making our position known before God who we are. You see, Jesus the other day says, you don't listen to me, but you listen to your father who? The devil. You understand? So when we listen to God and when we do what God says, we are declaring our position as the children of God. For those who received him, he gave them the right to be called the children of God. But the children of God, they will listen. Anyone who's got a father will normally listen what the father is actually saying. It's very, very important. So, um, obedience becomes so key, so much a key in people who are actually worshiping God. So, the person who God is looking for is the person who is obedient to God. Now, when you look at the Bible, as I see it myself, the Bible is really written, and when you look at it, <laughs> there are not so many things in terms of the themes, but you can actually see um, it's all about people who have listened to God, and it's all about people who have not listened to God, and people, all about people who had consequences of not listening to God, and people who actually had benefits of listening to God. So obedience becomes so much key in we worship God. So we are going to read the Bible from the book of Samuel. And, and, and it's a very interesting story, which I believe we have read it. Uh, so Samuel chapter 15. And it's going to be a, very, a, a, a bit of a read, but it's very important that we, we, we understand. So Samuel chapter 15 verse 1, and we're going to read, it's a long read, and up to 22. Oh, sorry, 1 Samuel chapter 15, yes. 1 Samuel chapter 15, from verse 1, war against the Amalekites. Samuel said to Saul, I am the one whom the Lord sent to anoint you, king of his people Israel. Now listen to what the Lord Almighty says. He is going to punish the people of Amalek, Amalek because their ancestors opposed the Israelites when they were coming from Egypt. Go and attack the Amalekites and completely destroy everything they have. Don't leave a thing. Kill all the men, women, children, and babies, the cattle, sheep, camels, and donkeys. Saul called his forces together and inspected them at Telem, where there were 200,000 soldiers from Israel and 10,000 from Judah. Then he and his men went to the city of Amalek and waited in ambush in a dry riverbed. He sent a warning to the Canaanites, a people whose ancestors had been kind to the Israelites when they came from Egypt. Go away and leave the Amalekites so that I won't kill you along with them. So the Canaanites left. So defeated the Amalekites, fighting all the way from Havila to Shah, east of Egypt, he captured King Aga of Amalek alive and killed all the people. But Saul and his men spared Aga's life and say and did and did not kill 
the best sheep and cattle, the best cows and lambs, or anything else that was good. They destroyed only what was useless and worthless. Saul is rejected as king. The Lord said to Samuel, I am sorry that I made Saul king. He has turned away from me and disobeyed my commands. Samuel was angry, and all night long he pleaded with the Lord. Early the following morning, he went off to find Saul. He heard that Saul had gone to the town of Carmel, where he had built a monument to himself, and he had gone to the he had gone to Pon to Kikigal. Samuel went to Saul, who greeted him, saying, The Lord bless you. Samuel, I have obeyed the Lord's commands. Saul asked, Why then do I hear cattle mowing and sheep bleating? Saul answered, My men took them from the Amalekites. They kept the best sheep and cattle to offer as a sacrifice to the Lord your God, and the rest we have destroyed completely. Stop, Samuel ordered, and I'll tell you what the Lord said to me last night. Tell me, Saul said. Saul answered, even though you consider yourself of no importance, you are the leader of the tribes of Israel. The Lord anointed you king of Israel, and he sent you out with orders to destroy those wicked people of Amalek. He told you to fight against you, had killed them all. Why then did you not obey him? Why did you rush to seize the Lord and do so? What displeases the Lord? I did obey the Lord, Saul replied. I went out as he told me to, brought back King Agar and killed all the Amalekites. But my men did not kill the best sheep and cattle that they captured. Instead, they brought them here to Kigal to offer as a sacrifice to the Lord your God. Samuel said, Which does the Lord prefer, obedience or offerings and sacrifices? It is better to obey him than to sacrifice the best sheep to him. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so, so we thank God for the reading of his word. So, so basically the story, we have had the story of uh, Samuel when, uh, sorry, Sam, Saul and Samuel. So Saul is the prophet. Samuel is the prophet. He, he, he hears from God. So God, uh, the message is um, go and tell um, uh, Saul that he, as he going to fight the Amalekites, he, he has to follow these instructions. Now, um, the very first thing which is important is to, is to understand he, he is a man who understood that this was a prophet from God. And uh, he needed to understand that uh, as God had instructed him, he needed to listen to the instruction as according to what God had actually told him. So listening to instruction is very important, uh, even when we're worshiping God, because we have to do it according to what God says. But anyway, um, the, the story goes on, and he goes to fight the Amalekites, but the instruction was go and destroy everything which is there. Do not leave anything, but just destroy everything. So he went there, and then he was involved, and uh, God gave the, them the victory, and he simple simple thing which he didn't do he just didn't listen to instruction he didn't listen to instruction um now all the things which we hear in the bible most of the time where people they don't listen to what god says and these things they we end up having some consequences simply because we just didn't listen to what god was saying now, so all the things which we hear in the Bible, um, most of the time we see people just don't listen to what God is saying. 
So the person who God is looking for is a person who listens to God's instruction. It's very important. Whether it's going to be difficult, whether it's going to be easy, but God is simply looking for those who are going to listen to his instruction. And then the Bible goes on to say that they destroyed what they destroyed, but they uh, kept other things which were good, the animals which were good, and they kept. But actually the instruction was not about keeping, but the instruction was about destroying everything. You see, um, now, so here's the thing I want to talk about, which I think is very, very important. Now, most of the time, and most of us as Christians, we always want to think about, about what we feel ourselves should be done. Despite whatever God has actually said, um, so thought within himself that even if God had actually said all these things, destroy everything, but if I keep a few best ones, or if I keep all the best ones, then I can then offer to God. But what he didn't understand was that, in other words, if God was saying destroy everything, it meant that God did not even accept any sacrifice from that land anyway. But within himself, within himself, he thought it was good to go and offer something to God. Whether, whether that's true or not, we don't know, because he only said it when he was being asked. <laughs> if this is for, for sacrificing uh, these things to God. No, so my point I want to make to you as you listen to me is that, now, it's very important to listen to what God says, and it's very important to follow what his instruction is all about. Um, there are many times where we think for God. There are many times where we decide for God. There are so many times where we think God has made a mistake. There are so many times where we think uh, God needed some help in making a decision here and there. There are so many times where we want to help God in a way because whatever he says, whatever he's done, is not really complete and we want to do a shortcut or whatever it is we think of doing. But what is important to note is that it's very important to follow the instruction as God says. It's very important to follow the instruction as Jesus says. That's what, is, what, what makes the difference. That's what makes, makes the difference. But he said within himself, he, when he was being asked, so he said, I kept the command. I kept the instruction. But so someone asked, so what is this mooing and bleating I'm hearing? What are these? And then he says, oh, no, I, we have kept the best ones to sacrifice to God. But actually, God had not given an instruction to keep anything for sacrifice or to keep anything for any offering. Yeah. But God had actually given an order to destroy everything as long as it's called everything. Mm -hmm. What you need to understand is that we want to find out, the, because that is a big cost for Saul. It was a very, very big cost. Mm -hmm. Saul was the king of Israel. Mm -hmm. Because of the instruction, the Bible says, he said, God regretted to make him as the king of Israel. Mm -hmm. Simply because of the men not listening to God's instruction. It was a big regret for God. And actually the Bible says, Samuel, he said he pleaded with the Lord all night, is it all night, I think, for a long time, in other words. He pleaded with God to say, I don't know the plead. Was that said, maybe let, let, let him continue to be the king, or whatever it was, I don't know. But the Bible says he pleaded with God for quite a long time. You see, so meaning that, no, when we, when we do not follow the instruction of God, God becomes angry because we are not listening to what God is saying. That's as simple as, as it is. Now, so his, his, his argument was that I have kept this so that I can give to God. So one thing we need to understand is that it is very important to listen to what God is saying first. Because, you know, whatever it is that you offer to God, you don't offer only to offer, but you offer for it to be accepted. You only don't get, give offer if you are doing that. I think you need to revisit. If you just offer because it, it's just for offering, you have to offer and in a way so that it can be accepted on your behalf. That's what, what is very important. So he says, we have kept some so that we can give as a sacrifice. So in other words, it has a wrong way of doing things. You have, not, you have disobeyed God, but you want to go and give him something. God does not need anything from anyone. That's 
because he has that already but when he says something it's only for your benefit and it's only for my benefit so all he needed was for Saul to listen to the instruction and to do exactly as what God has said now he was gonna give an offering but God has already been offended by whatever it is it's done already but he wants to go and give to God for us to have an offering which is accepted before God, we have to walk in the way which God wants. Because God, God is not hungry for anything. And God is not hungry for any, any offering. Amen. But he wants the offering to be done according to what he wants and according to, so, that, so that it can be accepted on, on your behalf. So there was no way God, God was going to accept the offering because already he has disobeyed him. So Saul then says, it is better to obey than to sacrifice. Now let us ask ourselves now, all the billions of Christians as we live, I know we offer to God, I know we, we do all sorts of things, but are we listening to the instruction of God? That's what is very important. Are we listening to God's instruction? Are we listening to what God is actually saying? Are we obeying what he's actually saying? Are we standing by his word? Are we doing is according to what he says? Or we are thinking that, okay, I do not listen to what he's saying, but I, I've got an idea. <laughs> because so I had an idea. So I had actually an idea. He said, listen, I, I, you know what? He said, that's destroy it, but this is a thing is too good to destroy. No, no, so God has already made a decision. I'm not accepting that offering. That offering. I, I already said destroy everything. But he thinks in his mind, I think this is good to give to God. Or whatever it is he was thinking. But he, he was actually disobeying God by the way he was actually thinking. Amen. So even yourself, ask yourself how many times have you disobeyed God? How many times have you thought about what God has said and tried to modify it? How much have you heard of God and God, God instruction and you think in yourself to that God may have made a mistake? You won't say it, you won't think about it, but it's the action which you do which demonstrates that you, you may probably think that he made a mistake. So God desires obedience more than sacrifice. God desires people to obey him than to give him whatever it is that we can give. Because the automatic answer may be that it's re rejected if we do not obey what he say. Obedience is better than sacrifice. That is the answer which God, sorry, which uh, Saul then received from Samuel. Because Samuel was a prophet of God. And Samuel had actually given the instruction. And actually, God was not pleased because God was waiting for the instruction to be carried as according to what he had said. Yeah. And when he was, it was not carried as according to what he had said, there was a problem. And a problem such that, in fact, let's read it. Because the Bible says here, the Bible says, um, so 15, no, so the Bible says here, the Lord said to Samuel, I'm sorry that I made... Huh. Let me actually read another translation. It's very interesting. It says, I'm sorry, uh, I made, it said, some, I'm sorry that I made so king. He has turned away from me and disobeyed my commands. Samuel was angry and all night long he pleaded with the Lord. Can you imagine? All night long is a man of God is pleading. You know, um, He's actually pleading against, uh, you know, to God to say, I don't know what you're saying, but he was pleading, pleading. Sometimes he's actually asking, you know, about uh, whether, whether God is going to change his mind or, or whatever. You see? Um, I want to read it in, so that's, uh, I'll, read, I'll just read it so that we just get a full understanding. Verse 10. So 15 verse 10 in...
Yeah, so verse 10 says, uh, Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he is turned back from following me, and hath not performed my commandments. So, as a Christian, or as someone who follows God, um, when we don't follow to what God is saying, God is not happy about people who are like that, who do not follow the instruction of God. If God has spoken, if God has said it, if actually God is saying and we don't follow, God is not pleased with that. And can you imagine? I just want you to imagine just for one minute. To imagine is it, it, something which you can take lightly to say, uh, you know, whatever it is you can think. But the issue is that he's a whole man who's been anointed as king. The, he's a king, 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 king is the ruler. He's the king of Israel. But because of disobedience, God says, I regret. Because he has not listened to what God is saying, he has not co followed the commands which God was saying. He says, I regret. B making this man a king because he has turned against my commands. You see? So, I want us to, I know maybe it's old school or whatever, but I want us to understand that it's very important because I think most of the time we, 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 we talk about that we, we live in the time of grace so we can always... We, we, we can always not follow. It's not correct. The correct thing is that even Jesus himself, he wants people who listen to what he says. Because the Bible says, if you, if, if you listen to my commands, myself and my Father will come and dwell in you. So, the issue of obeying God becomes so key to anyone who is a Christian. So, um, let us understand that obedience is very, very important and uh, when we obey God, it means we are making a declaration to say that we, we give in to authority. That's another thing. Many people, they don't give in to authority. You know, <laughs> authority is very important to understand that. Um, you see, if, if we don't understand that God is an almighty God, God is above everything, it means that it's, it's very easy for us not to listen to his instruction or listen to his command. But it's very important also to note that um, there are so many consequences which he become which before us because even when children of God in children of Israel, they tend against God for, for a longer time. God declared to them, he said to them, because again, Moses, as a man of God at the time, he, when they turned before, uh, against what God had actually said, they were turning against, turning, turning against God because of, the, because of the false report which they had actually got. Um, God, as the, the man of God actually pleaded for them. Again, here was Samuel, he had Samuel pleaded the whole night. And again, Moses pleaded for them as well. But the Bible says, I will forgive them as you have asked, but they will not enter the promised land. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So the issue of when we turn against God, uh, we don't then full, get the full benefit of what God is actually wanting to us. God is a God of mercy. God always forgive. That's 100%. But we should not make it a, a, a way of life when we continue to sin, when we continue to move away, when we continue to disobey what God is saying. So, what we need to understand is that the, the Bible teaches us that obedience is better than sacrifice. When we obey what God is saying, when we obey what God says to us, we are putting ourselves in a position to declare who we are. To declare who we are. Let me just say, draw a bit more on this. It's very important. So here's the thing. And I was telling my children the other day that um, 
when when Jacob was moving away from his uncle Laban one of the wives took something one of the gods away it's very important listen to this very very important so as they were going where they were going he followed isn't it he followed because why they had taken their god so here's the thing what we need to understand the children of god you know when we live a life of sin or when we move in the way which god does not want it means that we are declaring to even the devil that we are also his so when he is following his it becomes a problem here's things very very important sometimes the devil follow what he what what he what it owns sometimes we as christians we hold on to the things of the devil so much that when even the person who is praying for you is trying to cast demon you say that this is mine where do you want me to go why because it's holding on to something which you, you have remember when uh, Laban was following these people they had actually gone with their with their god so there was no reason why he would just stay at home he had to follow what was his do you understand what i'm talking about so we are ourselves as christians we need to make a declaration who we are who are we are we children of god if you are children of god then let us declare that let us let us be the children of god because if you are children of god and we are still possessing things of the devil it means that the devil will follow what it is yes it's following because you you have got something which belongs to me therefore i have to follow you so this man he followed these people yes they have left but he follows them because they have created something which belongs to him so sometimes by the way we do our things we end up entertaining the devil so much that he wants to follow us because he's following his property Amen. he's following his property you see so let us make a declaration who are we are we remember when jesus was saying he says you don't do my will but you do the will of your father the devil so by not doing what god says we are making a declaration that we belong to the devil because he says you don't do my will but you do the will of your father the devil so therefore let us make a declaration if i am a christian let me make a declaration by what i do Amen. let me make my position known to god who i am let me make a position before god and a declaration before god who i am really who i really am before him remember here's the thing so job the, the, the devil then was speaking to god and says he says have you have you observed have you seen my my servant job god knew that already he it is a job that's his servant he had, because he had made a declaration already because he had fo was following god and was following his command and he was actually a, a righteous person but the the issue is that the devil knew that there was nothing he was going to do to job because there was a fence there was a surrounding there was a protection of god surrounding job now the issue is sometimes by our actions sometimes by what we do we remove the surrounding of god we remove the covering of god we remove what is protecting us we remove what is covering us simply because of the way maybe you do so it's very important that we are aware of these things and it's very important that we make a declaration to god who we are and let us not our position let's not our let's our position not be doubted are you the child of god or are you not the child of god are you a christian or are you not a christian 
Do you worship God or you don't worship God? So make your declaration before your God so that God knows your position where you are, who you are before God. It's very important. And why is it important? It's because then all other things does not follow you. Because sometimes if we are, we are holding on to something which belongs to the devil, the devil always wants to come and get his own thing or his own thing. So do not be found in possession. <laughs> do not be found in possession of what belongs to the devil. Make your, make your identity known. Make your declaration known. As for me and my household, you worship God. And, and that's it. And we we'll, 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 we'll declare our loyalty towards God. So there's no doubt. So God will see very well. And there's no doubt in God that... Uh, Job was his own man. To the extent that he is actually asking the devil whether when he was going around, whether he actually noticed his man, uh, Job. He trusted, he believed, he knew. So make your position known. But that can only happen when we start to, to walk in obedience. I know obedience is not very much talked about, but I know it's going to give us access to so many things. Um, I know many people will say we live in the time of grace, but the question I'll ask you today is this. Where do you draw the line? Where do you draw the line? Because Jesus himself says, if you listen to my, my commands, myself and my father come and dwell in you. Um, obedience is better than sacrifice. It's very, very important. God, yes, you, you bring the offering to God, that's good, that's not a problem. But let me say to you, as according to Samuel said, it's better to be obedient to God than to bring a sacrifice. Amen. That's what the Word of God says. Um, so as we listen today, just think about obedience. Just think about, listen to what God says. And just think about moving in the way which God says. That's why this is very important. So the person who can actually be able to worship God is the person who understands that God likes obedience or demands obedience to us. Remember, he says he's a jealous God. So which means he is the one who um, he wants people to obey what he says is very, very important. Obedience is better than sacrifice. That's the word today, which we need to get home, to take home. Obedience is better than sacrifice. When we listen to what God is saying, we carry out as, as he has said, uh, let us not be like Samuel, because sorry, like, like Saul, because Saul heard exactly what God had said, and he listened to what God was actually saying, and he actually understood that he, he, you know, Samuel was a, a servant of God or the prophet of God. But he chose to do the instructions halfway, but also to do what he thought was right himself. And he disobeyed God in the, in the process. And that came with a heavy price. That really came with a heavy price because he was a king, a very honored man. But simply because of the disobedience, God says, you have turned against me. It costed him, that costed him the kingship because God rejected him as a king of Israel. So there's so many times when God speaks to us, there's so many times where God wants us to obey him, God wants to, us to do what he says. Yes, we may not know or we may not see physically the consequences, but sometimes in a spiritual way, there's so much devastating um, consequences when we don't listen to what God says. But actually, even saying that, we actually know and we understand that even God punished people who were turning, turning against him. Like I've even said, that uh, when God was speaking to the children of Israel, he said, I will forgive them, but they will not enter the promised land. You see, so, so, so disobedience has got so, a lot of consequences. Um, it's not talked that much about maybe, but let me say to you today that obedience is very important and it's very key 
to the kingdom of God. It's very key to the kingdom of God. Obedience is better than sacrifice. That's the word today. So as you live today, as you go back to your, to your homes, I want us to think, I want you to think about your conduct. I want you to think about your own self and evaluate yourself. That uh, Am I obeying God? Very simple. Am I obeying God? Am I obeying wha- what he says? Because obedience is better than sacrifice. That's the word which the man of God, the prophet Samuel, said to Saul. Obedience is better than sacrifice. He paid a heavy price that he was a king and rejected as a king simply because he had disobeyed what God says. Obedience, obedience, obedience. That's the word today. To obey God is better. To obey his word is that's better. To do his commands, that's, that's, that's better. That's what we need to be doing. When God speaks to us, when God, uh, through his word or whatever, but we need to understand that obedience is better than sacrifice. Um, and I've given you the consequences of what then happened to Saul when he disobeyed God. God, he says, he regretted to make that man a king because he had disobeyed. And remember, the Bible actually says that Samuel pleaded with God the all night. Pleaded with God all night saying, so when someone pleads, it means that he's asking maybe for forgiveness or maybe to, to reconsider the decision or, or whatever. But the same result came. He's rejected as the king of Israel. Finished. Disobedience has so much devastating consequences. And so if we are obeying God, let us go, let us move in the way which God wants. Jesus, the Son of God, as he came, he says, I have not come to abolish the law, but I have come to fulfill. And Jesus himself, he talks about people obeying his commands. If you obey my commands, myself and my Father will come and dwell in you. And let me say, Jesus' standards are even higher. He even set the, the, the standards so much high. You know, he, he set the standards so much high. So let us uh, continue to walk in obedience. Let us continue to revisit what God has said to you as an individual. Let us continue to think about what God says in his scriptures and see our perception. Let's see that we, we believe and we do exactly as what God has actually said to us. So my word today is obedience is better than sacrifice. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22, he says, obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. And that was where the issue started for Saul because he had been rejected by God. Because simply he had not followed God's instruction. So let us stand up. Um, and do God's will. Let us do what God says and let us continue to understand that he is God and whatever he says that we need to listen. And that declaration on its own to say that I stand for God. Be known for who you are. Be known that you are the child of God. Be known, do not be in between. That people, that God himself does not know that you are his child or not. You follow him or not. No, no, make a declaration that for me I declare that I am the child of God. So I'll follow what God says. That's very, very important. Because when you make that declaration, it's easy for God because God will, will know that you are just, just his child. And make sure that you, as you walk as a, as a child of God, do not hold on to things which are of the devil because the devil will always want to follow his positions, possessions. I'll give you an example already. That when... Um, when Jacob was going, one of the wives took away one of the gods. So the uncle followed, Laban followed, because they had something for him. So make sure that you, do, you are not a Christian who makes things and, you know, even God does not know where you stand. Make a declaration today, I'm a child of God, I'll be obedient to his word. 
May God bless you. Thank you very much for your listening. And uh, that's my word today. Um, so we are going to end with a prayer. So let's all bow our heads as we pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I commit uh, all those children or your children who are listening to me, to, to me today. I pray that the word shall have a meaning in their lives. That, Father God, they really understand what you want from them. To obey, to obey your word. And, Father God, it's for them to know that obedience is better than sacrifice. I pray that, Father God, they shall listen to your word and they shall um, continue to seek you in the scriptures and do your will. And that, Father God, obey what you have said. So that you, God, you'll be pleased. We thank you. We commit everyone in your hands. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, jo join us again as we continue to explore uh, the goodness of God and uh, the, um, so we can continue to understand our purpose and continue to walk in God's ways. And that's, that, that's very important because we are here to worship God. The Bible in the book of e e Ecclesiastes says, the whole reason why men were created by God or human beings were created by God so that they can worship God and, and keep his commands. That's very important. So obedience is better than sacrifice. Thank you very much for listening. May God bless you. Amen.